Well, hello and welcome to another Starbase Summary. This one goes from October 4th to October 6th. And if you're confused by who, who's this voice talking here, well, you might have heard me on some of the streams. I'm Alex. I'm not Das, not John Galloway or anything like that. Uh, he's on holidays. So it's you're stuck with me, essentially. The Spanish guy talking in English, apparently. But here we have both of the structural test stands, uh, not structural, excuse me, the thrust simulator stands for the ship and the booster rolling out to masses, which is quite frankly interesting uh, considering that the booster one, the, the booster thrust simulator stand is not needed anymore because it's, it's for the older version of the boosters. They already have their own uh, their own stand and we can see there the traffic <laughs> They needed to, to stop there to, to let the, the traffic pass and everything. But yeah, they already have one for the future boosters. We don't know about the ships, uh, about the ship stand, right? Um, we'll see if they modify that one or if they have to build a new one. We have not seen, or at least I personally have not seen them uh, sort of undergoing that construction of a new stand. So I assume, just my own thoughts here, that they're probably going to be modifying the existing one for previous ships um, and sort of adapting it for Raptor 3. But speaking of adaptations, uh, if you will, they're doing some work on the sh on the chopsticks and here, in fact, is removing dampeners and some of the actuator systems on the chopsticks. I can probably discuss that a little bit later in the video. But there we can see also some work on the GSC structure there on, on pad 2 getting some of that shielding, which is very, it's going to be very well needed when any Starship launches from there. And of course, before any launch happens, they also need to remove that scaffolding. And here we can see already some of the first sections for tower cranes at the Gigabay uh, area. So those are going to be put together and they're going to be four of these aiding on that construction of the Gigabay. Some random parts here might be for the Star Factory, I guess. Judging by the colors only, it's like usually they're painted white, like tooling for the Star Factory. Whatnot. By the way, if I talk too much or if I talk too, too fast, it's like I'm trying to fit a lot of these explanations. You know, if you know me from, from live streams, I'm, I'm the guy with the long answers. So that's pretty much why. But you can maybe, you know, rewind and things like that. Maybe listen it again. Here's a structure for the makeshift umbilical that they did for, for testing ships at Pad 1. And of course, this is the Sanchez lot. They have a bunch of different parts here, storage, in, in storage. So, yeah. This is a next generation booster transport stand, because this, this one specifically has the clamps for the next generation of boosters. Really excited to see one of those hanging around, you know, and being transported on one of those. Can't wait enough. Meanwhile, we have here booster 15, next flight, right? That's gonna be launching on flight 11. Then we've got booster 17, probably not gonna fly. There's no ships for it. And then booster 12 as well, which we'll see what it goes. Meanwhile, there's there's been a lot of cyber trucks being brought to Starbase lately. In the last few days, our team out there has seen a lot of these coming up. We don't know what the deal with that is, um, but even have parking lots dedicated to it. Maybe I'm spoiling part of the of the future of this video. Um, but but yeah, um, I saw some of the pictures already which are out for, for members. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's quite interesting that they've brought these cyber trucks. I guess they're probably replacing all of the existing trucks that they have. Maybe they're gifting this to employees. I have no idea. Either way, cyber trucks. At Starbase, not a, not a new thing to be honest. There'll, there'll just be more. I mean, you can see one of those already there, on Highway Four. <laughs> uh, yeah, some some stretches, I guess. Making sure they don't pull a muscle or anything like that, right? <laughs> The office building. Here is where they have all of the, I guess, offices. That's that's why we call it like that. But they also have the launch control there for Starship. We saw that on Flight 10. They had Dan and, and the crew out there for that. Meanwhile, here we can see the launch site. Pad 2 on the foreground. 
had one in the background. Although it, they're so big and it's sort of at a distance that it seems like they're both same distance, but no, it's actually one is, is closer than the other. And here, of course, we have pad two, a lot closer now. And we can see there some of the scaffolding that has disappeared on the right-hand side. There used to be a scaffold sort of stair of sorts, right? If you go back to a few summaries, you might have seen that there was a, sort of like a stair made out of scaffolding out there. And it's gone now. It's gone. Also, the stack me sign. <laughs> I remember telling Das on the previous story summary recorded in London. Uh, I, I sort of spoiled the video by telling him, yep, it's gone already. <laughs> so, so yeah. But there we can see, and one of the things that we usually, you know, Das usually talks about in these story summaries is, you know, nature, right? Nature next to these gigantic structures. And, and we could see some of those birds and the reflecting pool in, in the previous clips. But yeah, um, those are the two booster quick disconnects. They're going to be using two of them, one mainly for liquid methane, which is the one right there or the one that we could see before on the on the previous clip and the other one will be mainly for liquid oxygen there'll be other fluids and whatnot but the main thing they'll car they'll carry will be that meanwhile the mega bunker here i feel like we should say something like mega bunker or something like that right i i feel like das has not done that yet so i'm i'm gonna be the one doing that um but yeah we can see that it, it might be, one of the theories is that it might replace some of the rest uh, areas, the, you know, restroom areas and whatnot that they have, because they might be in the way of the plume from Pat 2's flame trench. Um, and meanwhile, some more work here on the tank farm wall here, one of the, one of the blast walls, if you will, for, con you know, for contention and all that. Also doing some excavation here, which is really interesting because this is a cross of the air separation unit that they're building. So, hmm, interesting. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what you, what you guys think. My, my theory is that maybe they're starting to put together some of the underground pipes to go from the air separation unit out to the tank farm and vice versa. I don't know. Maybe you guys can, can leave a comment down below and, and tell us what you think. Meanwhile, that's the, the air separation unit that I was talking about. This is going to be grabbing some air from the, our atmosphere and taking the nitrogen and oxygen out of it because, you know, m more than 90% of it is just nitrogen and oxygen. It's out there. And they use the nitrogen for the tank farm conditioning. They use the oxygen. I mean, like 80% of Starship's propellant is oxygen. So, yeah, it's there. It's free. Just, you know, plug it to, to power and have the right conditions and whatnot, and you can just take that and use it for launching starships. The methane will take a bit more work. Uh, for In the meantime, they're, they're, they're going to be still tracking it in and everything, but they have plans to be able to, you know, get uh, at least liquefy natural gas and things like that and purify it, blah, blah, blah. It's a long thing. We've covered that on some of the recent Starbase update episodes if you want to look a bit more of an in-depth explanation into that. But yeah, lots of concrete work, groundwork and everything, preparing the foundations for that air separation unit. You know, usual, usual work as always. And here we can see more nature in action, I guess. The birds in the flats there with the reflecting pool and everything. It's, it's just, you know, some of the water that pools there from time to time. I'm really curious if it's like from the tides or from the rain and it's still there because it was raining like a couple of weeks ago and it might still be laying around. But in any case, we can see here orbital pad one. That will say, well, it's not orbital because there's not being any orbital <laughs> flights. But, uh, you know, that's what the paperwork says. So we'll stick with the paperwork. <laughs> it now finally says pad one, by the way. Latest paperwork, it does say now pad one instead of pad A. But, but yeah, we can see some of that uh, sort of the, the hardware that has been removed from the chopsticks, uh, the actuator, the, the landing rails. And they've also been doing some kind of simulated booster lift here in preparation for flight 11, which is always nice because, you know, it's been a while since those chopsticks have been moved in in that pattern. 
that we can see some of that more, uh, some of that work. As I was saying, one of the things that they have been doing is removing some of the actuators for the landing rails. They're not going to be catching anything on Flight 11. And the landing rails, because of their design, uh, going forward, they're not going to be useful for Block 3 or anything. So it's not like they need to move the landing rails. There's not going to be any boosters landing on, on those rails anymore. So, you know, just starting already some of those modifications probably for, you know, future flights. But, yeah, speaking of future flights, I mean, this is Pad 2. Flight 12 will happen from here. Or so we hope. I mean, knock on wood, that's, that's the case. <laughs> And there we can see some parts installed on the liquid auction BQD, stands for Booster Quick Disconnect. We have a whole video about Starbase acronyms and, and whatnot, so you should probably check that out. Maybe we can link it somewhere. Ooh, this is actually cool because now this is the actual flight hardware. We saw the launch pad, we saw, but this is going to be the first ship flying from Pad 2. And this is really important because you can see it's got a lot of tiles already on it. And, and so hopefully soon, they can get into the stacking process. They have already stacked the nose cone on the payload bay section, but you know they kind of have to continue to get a full ship. And speaking of continuing, they are also continuing with future vehicles as well. This is Ship 40, the, one, the next one in line after 39, and it's already got a lot of tiles on it. Look, look at that. There's a bunch of rows there. It's got the white felt, the, the ablative material, the black ablative material, and all that. Ship 41 snow scone with the tile pins and everything installed as well. Really, really great progress here. I bet once, you know, they go through all of the test tanks and whatnot, they just, you know, start stacking and, and just, you know, one after the other, it, it, they, they all come out. Ship 43 snow scone there as well. No tiles, no pins no flaps or anything like that but still you know part of the of the process it's a little bit behind in that in that sense and yeah we can see here those cyber trucks as i was saying there's like dedicated parking spots now for those at starbase and there's a bunch of those as you can see one two three four th five six seven ah, i couldn't count any of those but in any case uh you know thank thank you as always for watching and you know i don't know how does does this every single time but in any case thanks to everyone in the field for all the footage and of course thank you for watching and i guess i won't see you on the next one somebody will see you on the next one